Today I'm going to show you how to create a good quality speech recording and then compress it so that the file can reach its destination very quickly. I'm using a headset microphone, which is the simplest way to get a good quality audio recording without any specialist equipment. First I want to make sure that it's actually recording from the right microphone. So I'm going to click here and choose start monitoring. Here I can see the meters going up as I speak. And when I'm not speaking, they're very low down on the left. So if I could see my speech is, isn't much higher than the background noise, then I should move to a different location to get a better quality recording. I also want to check that it's recording from the right microphone. So I'm going to tap my headset microphone. Yeah, I can see that it's recording from my headset. If the levels are like this, my recording's a bit too quiet and I might be able to adjust the input level with this control here. My headset microphone has an auto level feature built in, so this control is grayed out for me. But if you're using a different kind of microphone, this controller might be useful. If your level meter is showing like this, then your input volume is too loud, or you've got the microphone too close to your mouth, and you should move it further away, because this sound will be unintelligible. Around here is about right. It should occasionally hit zero on the right, but mostly be between minus 24 and zero when you're speaking. Here's an example of quite a good recording. I can see there's silent bits here, and then when I'm speaking, I can see the blue lines are a bit higher than the silence. I can also see it's recorded in stereo. I don't need this speech recording to be in stereo, so I'm firstly going to convert it to mono, which will speed everything up and make a smaller compressed file in the end. So I'm going to click here and choose split stereo to mono. And because the left and the right look to me to be identical, they're both the same volume, so I'm just going to get rid of one of these by clicking the X. So now I've just got a single channel of sound. I want to look at this a bit bigger, so I'm going to choose View Fit Vertically. Control Shift F is the shortcut if you're doing this often. And that makes it a lot easier to see. Ideally, I'd like the highest bits of my lines to reach right to the top and the bottom of this window. So I'm going to amplify this. The reason I'm doing this is if there's a mixture of different pieces of audio that the students are listening to, they won't have to keep adjusting their volume up and down if everything is amplified to the same volume. So I'm going to select the whole document and choose Effect and Amplify. This automatically boosts the amplification so that it's as loud as it can be without distorting. I just click OK. And I can see now that the loudest piece reaches the bottom of the screen. So this is as loud as it can be now. Sometimes you may try to amplify your recording and find that the amplification value is zero. It's not going to amplify it at all. I can see in this recording there is one part which is very loud. This sound is actually a click, which I don't want in the recording. So I can just remove that by selecting it and pressing the backspace key. Then when I amplify, I can see it's amplifying it 7 decibels and everything amplifies like it did before. Sometimes you may find parts of your recording are louder than others, so you can select one part and choose Amplify. So it's amplifying this part a little bit more than this part. So this may be useful if, if you've recorded one part a little bit more loudly than another. But usually you can just amplify the whole piece in one go. Now it's time to save and compress the file. I'm going to choose export and choose mp3. I'm going to choose options. I've experimented and found that the variable rate with a quality of 45 to 85 kilobits per second actually works quite nicely for speech. So I'm going to click OK and click Save. It'll ask me if I want to add any extra details. Any details you put in here will appear in MP3 players such as iTunes, and it might help students search for your file if you put in details about the, the lecturer and the 
subject. I'm not going to, for this example, I'm just going to click OK. And that's saved. If you've got a very long lecture, like half an hour or an hour, this may take quite a while to compress. So you can experiment with your settings by selecting a section before you export and then choosing export selection. Then you can choose your options and listen to the file that you've exported. If the quality is up to scratch, then you can go ahead and export the whole recording using the same settings. Now if I compare the sizes of my files, my original recording was 426 kilobytes. My compressed one is 16 kilobytes. If you need a very small file, choose constant and choose 32 kilobits per second. The quality is not very high, so only use that if you need to make a very small file. I hope that helps.